Hello, everyone. We are playing a demo for a new visual novel that's coming out. <coughs> it is called Our Life, Now and Forever. I was interested in it. Because this art looks strangely familiar and I can't really, I can't pinpoint why? Like, it looks familiar. I feel like I should know who did this art, right? Anyways, let's go in. I've been following the production of this for a bit. So it looks it looks fun. Welcome to our to the Our Life Now and Forever intro demo. This is a 25,000 word preview that includes the first few scenes of the game's prologue. Expansions and improvements to the game will come out as time goes on. For example, the finished version will have partial voice acting. This initial demo doesn't have any voice lines. When the game is complete, the entire story will be playable from the start to end for free. However, optional paid DLCs will be available to add in, e in even more scenes. The very start is a brief tutorial that will be skippable in future playthroughs. It'll help you get acquainted with all the many ways your choices can impact how the game plays. At any time, you can press the PREF button on the left side of the game screen to open the settings page and make the experience better suited for you. You can change the text size, font style, sound volume levels, turn the light animation elements on or off, and other general options. The story of our life now and forever spans 12 years with the character you play as beginning as a 10-year-old child and ending as a 22-year-old adult. In between those two points are two other stages of life, 14-year-old adolescence, ad adolescence, and 18-year-old young adulthood. These time periods are referred to ste as steps one through four. This demo only contains scenes from childhood. You'll be able to determine almost everything about the playable character, name, appearance, personality, pronouns, skills, weaknesses, how they act, what they feel, and more. All of these details can change as you grow up over the course of the game, however, they won't be forgotten. <coughs> who you are and who you were is remembered by the game and the characters you meet. Choices you picked in step one can still be referenced all the way in step four. It builds together. The goal of our life is to let you truly live your own unique life in the quaint mountain town of Golden Grove. But there are also two main characters who will grow up alongside your own character, Tamarack Bauman and Chu Lin. Is that how you say it? Because that's how the Q is pronounced, right? Chu? Chu Lin? You'll have the option of being their friend, pursuing one romantically, just having them simply be people you know, letting your connections change over time, and so on. Your relationship is customizable and progresses at whatever rate you want it to, if you want it to. A couple things you can't do are date them both or break up with one after officially getting together. If you've had one become your romantic partner, that's permanent. Tamarack is a little girl, she, her, when you meet her, and she always identifies as a woman. She begins the story as a little boy, he, him, but questions their gender as the years go by. She will eventually come out as gender fluid, he, they. Our life now and forever doesn't include the option to romance a strictly male identifying character. But we do have another game, Our Life, Beginnings and Always, if that's your preference. There will be other characters to interact with and befriend besides Tamarack and Chu, even th though those are the main focal points. How well you get along with other kids, your teachers, your mom, and so on is still in your control. With those basics mentioned, the tutorial will move on to a new screen now to explain another major gameplay element. I want to play the first game too. The first thing you'll do in Our Life Now and Forever is design the appearance and basic details of your character. You'll be able to select a first name, last name, and add a nickname, too. You can also give your MC their general size, choose their dominant hand, and so on. The sex slash gender of the MC is customizable as well, but that'll be done on a different screen later. The remaining parts of this section are all the many ways you can edit the appearance of your character. A simple dress-up doll icon is included to give you an idea of what your playable character is like. You can change every aspect of the doll from the shape of the head and eyes to the hairstyle to the coloring of each element to what they wear. The customization can be extra unique by having the hair and or eyes be two completely different colors, tweaking the exact tint of the colors, flipping the direction of different elements, and more. 
You can stick to the preset options if you're happy with them or want to get through the customization faster. What you choose will be referenced in the script and the icon image you put together will appear on the text box when your character speaks unless you turn that element off. The game has a first person perspective so you don't see your MC standing alongside the non-playable characters in the normal character sprite style. This first round of designing will set some important basics like eye color and skin tone. That will never change for the rest of the story, but almost everything else can be altered eventually. You'll get the option to use this screen to customize your MC at the start of each step. You can change your first name, nickname, hairstyle, what they're wearing, etc. all over again if you want. <coughs> Sorry, allergies. And new decoration options, such as facial piercings, will become available once your character has gotten older. That's everything for this initial screen, so we'll let you begin. More tutorial sections will pop up as you reach new gameplay features. Thank you so much for playing, we hope you have fun. Alright, face shape. Um, I wanna... We need to change the hair so I can see the face shape a little better. I want a pointy face, because that's what I have in real life. These eyes. So what are the short hair options? That's a lot of options. Oh, and the back can- ooh! And then you can okay. I like that. Let's do that. I used to wear a lot of turtlenecks as a kid. I don't have any turtlenecks now, but I do like them. No hats for me. Actually, for going by how I looked as a kid, I had round glasses as a kid. Colors are a bit strange for me, so let me let me reference uh, my OBS on my other monitor. So fun fact, my eyes are actually a little more green than they are blue. Let me see if I can. Is there any way I can make one of the greens slightly more blue? Nah. That's fine. There's a dog coming in here. I just saw my curtain move. Not to do that.
had blonde hair growing up uh but it like slowly changed to like dirty blonde so that's what i'm trying to recreate here yeah i like that i'd say oh oh interesting Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'd say that looks like what I looked like as a kid. Oh. oh. I'm right-handed. I was kind of tall. I was, I was one of the tallest people in my grade. I am small. Hello from the tutorial again. Now you get to customize the identity of your MC. Like the MC's appearance, you can make this aspect of your character as personalized as you want or not. Make use of some of the more specific elements. Determining the gender of the MC was assigned as birth what pronouns they use, if they use multiple pronouns, adding in your own custom pronouns, selecting which gendered terms they're comfortable with and such can all be up to you. You can also change everything except your assigned gender at birth at the start of every new step. If you want to begin with one identity and then have your MC go through a transition once they're older, that's completely doable. Feel free to select whatever feels the most comfortable at this stage of the story. Um, so, I am just gonna keep uh, my current pronouns but um, honorifics that's a good one yeah I'll keep that obviously I didn't use these pronouns too much as a kid but well if they're starting at like 10 no, yeah, that sounds about right. I was a little later to, like, I, it was around 12 when I started, but at 10, yeah, that works. Neutral leaning, yes. Now that you've got your own character ready, you'll be able to influence the appearance of your biological mother. She has three hair textures and four skin tones. You can look, make her look as similar or as different from your MC as you like. Ideally, more hair skin tone options will be added for her, for her further in development. She chose to raise a child on her own and use artificial insemination to give birth to your character. The biological father never appears in the story. So if your character happens to look nothing like their mom, it can be assumed that they take after the off-screen father instead. You'll also get to choose what term your character refers to her by. Currently, it must be a title in order to make sense in the script. If you enter her in her first name, the phrasing won't make sense. Later builds of the game may be suited for calling her by her name instead of a title. You'll also be able to change the title you use for her at the start of every new step. Her skin tone and hair texture will remain consistent for the rest of the game. Okay. I'm just gonna make her look a little more like my mom. Uh, my mom has kind of wavy hair. Okay. And we've got a last little bit of customization before the story begins, your interface play style. First there's your sticker. A sticker is just as cute, just a cute image that appears in, oh, I accidentally clicked. We'll never know. <laughs> you can easily track different playthroughs by using different stickers and your sticker can change whatever you want by clicking the info button. Okay. One example to use it. It would be if you have a playthrough you're enjoying, but in step two, you're not sure if you want to romantically pursue Tamarack or Shu. You can take that same file, change the sticker, and make another save. One version of the story and sticker could have you dating Tamarack, and the other sticker is a separate story with Chu. The, the 
demo has a limited selection of options. More will be added into the final version of the game. Finally, there's two different textbook styles to choose from. A traditional visual novel arrangement with the box always along the bottom of the screen, or a more comic book style where the text bubbles are positioned next to the one talking and at the bottom of the screen when it's narration. You can switch between them at any time on the preference screen. By default, both textbooks, text box styles will have the icons to show who's speaking. Those can be turned on or off through your preference settings as well. Thank you for reading the beginning tutorial. One more section will appear near the end of the demo to explain a special gameplay feature. I want the bag. Yeah, I want the comic book style. And here we go. Oh, my arm. <coughs> it looked like fall here in Golden Grove. More than any place you'd seen before, it could be in one of your old picture books to show little kids what autumn was supposed to be. There weren't any green trees or bushes, but there weren't just bare branches yet. It was almost the same as normal. All that had changed were the colors, red, orange, yellow, and brown. Even the blue of the sky high above your head seemed different than it did in summer. It wasn't as bright either, as though it had gotten tired of sparkling by this late in the year, or like it was even further away from you now that you were in this place. The plants and sky didn't get this way where you lived, where you used to live. Your thoughts continued to jump around while you stood there in the big circle of street at the end of the road. It was a weird path to you. It couldn't take you ahead to, or to the skies or anything else like most streets you'd gone down. This one only came right here with those big homes. The view in front of you was something you'd only ever seen in photos before, from stapled together papers that advertised the middle house being for sale. It had been a picture book to you until this day. Now you knew that it felt like fall here too because it was cold outside. Chilly enough that you sometimes held your eyes closed for a few seconds longer than usual to try keeping your eyeballs from feeling like they were going to freeze inside your head. This was a real place, the icy air surrounding you said, and you were really in, in it. And it was where you were going to stay. That was new. Your mom and you had lived in apartments before, never for very long each time. That was until she'd gotten a big job in this not-that-big town and brought, bought a big house. You wouldn't be going anywhere else for a long time. Now, in that moment, you couldn't imagine being there forever. But that's just the way it was. The old tan house at the very end of the long, round road was now your house, standing tall with two others by its sides. Those buildings were homes, too, with their own people living inside, and those people in those ancient houses were going to be your neighbors. So I lived in a cul-de-sac growing up, also. Um, we didn't have the middle house, but we had like the house right by the edge. And we had these neighbors whose dogs would bark at us every single time we walked into the drive driveway. A lot of options to pick from. Options are, it seemed okay to you. You felt kind of mixed up inside. You were super excited about everything happening. You were mad. There wasn't much you felt about that. It all made you so sad. You felt scared. This would really be something, you thought. Let's go with... You see, when I moved, I moved when I was like 12. To... Yes, 12. Uh, to a new house. And I was super excited. Cause it, was a, it was a nice house. Nothing was going to be boring anymore. And it was even better you'd be doing this with your mom and it was good that that part was nice since your mom was no fun. Oh, I see. We're going to go with the, the, the that option. You'd have so much fun together. Sol, come on over and take a look. Oh, that was your mom's voice. You hadn't noticed sh she'd got gotten so far. You wasted no time catching up in order to reunite with her. Off the cul-de-sac road and cutting across lines of grass and sidewalk, you reached the picket fence your mom had called from. 
The gate was unlocked. Unlike the other houses in front of yours was a tiny, gray stoned walkway that led up to a couple of little steps, and those steps led to the door. You walked along the private path, making sure each foot landed squarely on a rock and not on one of the dirt cracks in between until you arrived at the end of the line. Then you hopped up the tiny stairs to stand beside your mom. Ah! She gets a sprite, that's nice. Yeah, this art, very familiar. Don't know what that's about. And there was, there your mom was, standing at the edge of the porch, arms folded and waiting. Oh, is she blinking? Oh! She must have been moving around before because the shiny opal earrings she had on were twisting from side to side a little bit. You know they were real opal stones because she told you before when she first got them. She also told you a long time ago that her normal name, not mom, was opal. Her clothes were the colors of a cloudy day and cloudy day after rain had already come and gone. The kind of day that could be cold and bad or really relaxing and comfy. It depended. You wondered which way she looked at it from. You didn't know. The rest of her, though, was so much more bold, especially the matching purpley cranberryness of both her hair and eyes. There weren't a- oh. Oh, you can scroll up. Okay. There weren't a lot of things out in the world that w the color, with that color that could feel gloomy. Mom smiled at you. It made you feel as soft and warm on the inside as your mom was on the outside. What do you think? It's a nice place, huh? I've seen worse junk. I've seen better places. It's beautiful. I'm gonna have my own room, right? It stinks, you said bluntly. It stinks, you said jokingly. It's okay, I guess. You stared at her blankly, you nodded eagerly, you shook her, your head furiously. Um... Gonna have my own room, right? You will, my dear. Her mouth stayed in the shape of a smile, but her eyes and eyebrows changed, bending in a way that made it seem like she wasn't really smiling. Or it was some other kind of smile. She put a hand on one of the white painted pole things that kept the porch roof from falling down. Her fingers moved down it. Won't be too much longer. The real estate agent should be here to hand over the keys in a couple hours or so. Then it'll be f official. We'll be the newest residents of Golden Grove. You shifted your weight from one foot to the other. This was a big deal to your mom. Her whole life was changing too. You hoped it wouldn't be a mistake. You didn't want your mom to be sad. Well, you've seen the yard and the outside. You don't have to wait here the entire time. How about you go look around the rest of the neighborhood? She bent down, placing her hands on her knees in order to speak directly to you on the same level. It's a safe town, especially in this area. You'll be able to play freely out here. You perked up at the suggestion. You jumped up happily. Your eyes went wide in fear. You huffed unhappily. You merely shrugged. You covered your face with your hands, not wanting to go. You turned your face away from her in defiance. Uh, yeah. First one. Mom went back to her normal way of standing with her head up high and arms folded. That's the spirit. Enjoy yourself, just don't stray into any other streets today. Yes, Mom, that's not fair. I won't promise. You didn't care about rules, but you kept that to yourself. You gave a thumbs up. You grumbled about the restriction. Gave a thumbs up. Thank you, I trust you. With that, you flipped around, bounded down the steps, and went back on towards the sidewalk, ready to explore. I got a burp. <coughs> Excuse me. Step one, prologue. Your shoes really squished into the dirt path when you crossed down, crossed from where you were down to the solid road. The smell of the grass and rain softened, it, it, rain softened ground, crisp though somehow also kind of musty, hung in the air, bringing a whole new year of school with it. You were going to be a fifth grader. It would be completely different from being just a fourth grader, and not just because you'd be attending a new school. You'd be in the highest grade of the place. Maybe that was why your mom was so sure you could do this by yourself. You were growing up. It felt good knowing that there were... Knowing there was more and more out there, you'd be able to explore on your own. 
Then, before you took one more step, there was a faint tap against your shoulder. It was barely stronger than the wind, but it was definitely something, and it was completely out of nowhere. Huh, he wondered what that was. You jumped straight in the air out of shock. Both your fists went up defensively. You screamed. You rubbed your shoulder, feeling annoyed at whatever it was. It was a ghost, you deduced. Jumped straight in the air out of shock. It was pure instinct. You hadn't even realized it happened until you were back on the ground. Rapidly, you ping-ponged your gaze from left to right, trying to get a glimpse of the poking perpetrator. No one was there. The, neighbor the neighborhood was empty except for you. You would have settled on it being a mystery forever if, it hadn't, if you hadn't noticed there was a thing left behind from the encounter. Sitting there in between the muddy brown blades of grass was something new. Oh, I believe they posted a clip of this, this part. A paper airplane. Who would throw this at a stranger and why would they disappear after doing it? As you considered those questions, your gaze shifted back towards the right, the side of the street where the tap came from. Whoever sent this to you had to have gone that way. You crouched down to grab it while keeping a lookout to make sure nothing else snuck up on you. The paper didn't feel the same crinkly, crackly way most normal paper did. It was thicker somehow, almost like a piece of cloth. It was cottony. That wasn't the only part that stood out. The paper was a tan color with a dark with dark brown lines, not a white and blue or black and white and black or something regular. More questions to add to the confusion. Where would paper like that have come from? You turned the paper airplane around in your hands and squinted your eyes keenly. There were pencil markings on the underside. The paper had scribbles or even, even maybe even words on it. That was enough of a sign to undo the shapes someone had put together. You pulled out the flaps of the plane and flattened it out between your palms as best as you could. It was true. The paper airplane had a message on it. Well, maybe you thought. There were some words on it, but not a lot, and they were on different lines from each other. You read over each tiny part from top to bottom. Hello. My throat's getting dry. Go out. Hide out. And then in the bottom corner was Soulheart. Your name! It had been addressed to you personally. There was no mistake that you were the one meant to get that plane. You scrunched up your face. A person wrote stuff on a piece of paper, turned it into a paper airplane, threw it at another person, and the message they sent was that? This was too weird for you. This was so cool. This was a mystery worth solving. This was stupid. This scared you. This was... something? Mystery worth solving. Maybe the words were a code you had to break. You had to tell your mom right now you were going to get to the bottom of this. You were done exploring. It was time to go back to that house. You just wanted to get back to looking around. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. You're going to get to the bottom of this. Someone or something had to have sent this to you. You weren't going to stop until you found out who and why. Past the parts where the light shone through the clouds and the parts where it got darker, you began your investigation by heading in the same direction the paper had hit you from. The half circle of houses was out of sight by the time the normal sidewalk ended and it really ended. Instead of connecting to another street with homes or stores, there was a car road behind you and a bunch of trees and plain ground in front. Going down the road would have to bring you to the rest of town eventually, but you were sure that would be straying too far like your mom warned against. That was okay, you had other options. Bending in between the dark trunks and bright leaves were two lines stamped out through the grass. They went in opposite directions. D directions. It was a crossroads. One led more towards the neighborhood where the neighborhood was, but, the back f but back further, right on the edge of where the forest started. The other went completely into the trees, a walking path for the people who lived here. You stood there at the start of this turning point in the woods in your life, feet poised to move over the st stirring thicket floor. Hmm, you knew exactly which one you wanted, but you didn't know where you were going. Didn't know where you were going. How could you know which one was better? You'd never tried either, and there were no clues on where to start now. It was a puzzle that made you pause. You thought about it as hard as you could, even shutting your eyes to focus. Then finally... Which path 
path should we go down? I kind of want to go down the path. It looks pretty. And your quest continued. Once you went through the foresty path, you had tru truly entered the wild woods. Nothing else surrounded you any longer. Nature spread across the land with a narrow dirt line and fence being the only sign anyone had walked in this spot before you. People were only visitors here. Golden and red leaves gently rustled against each other in thick clumps with each tree's branches flowing into the others nearby. It was enough to keep the sky and sun out almost completely, but leaves burned bright with the light basking over them from above. The foot-made passage continued to twist around up higher into the mountainside, farther than you could see. Ooh, lots of options. You were amazed. It was sort of nice. You felt uneasy. You preferred the neighborhood over the woods. It was dirty and icky. This was your kind of place. Your curiosity was piqued. It was so boring you regretted coming out of here. Um... You were amazed. With your wide, wondrous gaze thrown every which way, you let yourself flow deeper into the thicket. The quiet bubble that existed here in the forest, away from the town, popped from a sudden, unnatural clatter. You stopped. It was a whooshing, thumping, and stirring up the leaves of the leaves, like something had crashed into them. You knew for sure that wasn't the wind. It had to have been an animal or a person, and it came from right over there. You decided to just take a peek. You wandered through the bushes to find the source of the sound. You picked up a stick to throw it that way, just to see if something happened. I would do that. While keeping your gaze trained forward, you bent down and felt around for a good-sized branch or something else that you'd be able to throw far but still have enough weight to get through the trees. Once you wrapped your fingers around a chunk of bark that work, you stretched your arm back behind your head and then through the stick in front of you. It flung forward and noisily disappeared into the bush. The brush. You couldn't see where it landed, the leaves swallowing it up whole. But that's n all that happened. Nothing jumped out at you. It just got quiet again. Decided to just take a peek. You crouched lower and snuck off the path. It was harder to keep your footing on the slanted, untrimmed ground. When you reach a really tree-cluttered spot, you grasp at the branches and push them aside in order to poke your head through. You move them the same way you'd open up a set of curtains, but it was a lot harder to do. The tiniest branches couldn't take the bend and snapped from the pressure. You could feel the splintery ends of the plants scratch out a little at your face and clothes. It wasn't as secretive of a check as you'd hope it'd be. On the other side of that tree line was still the woods, but kind of an empty part. There was a lot of open ground with no trees or bushes growing and a ton of leaves that were gathered into piles. Past that clearing, the trees were back and even more closely pressed together than they were by the path. It was mysterious. There was nowhere e easy to go and nothing seemed out of place to you until... It hurt! Hello! There was a shout and a new whirlwind of leaves rushing through the air. From underneath one of the piles was a uh, kid. You knew that was going to happen. Oh, she's so cute. She's so baby. Who was this person? That's all you thought. You couldn't look away from their eyes. They were really red. They had sparkly hair, you noticed. You liked the scarf they had on. They were There were leaves stuck in their hair and clothes. That was the prettiest person you'd ever seen. Hmm. Couldn't look away from their eyes. They were really red. You couldn't hold the leaning posi forward position any longer and stumbled forward completely into the open area. You stared at them and they looked right back at you as everything they'd thrown into the air dr gently drifted back down. Hi. Were you in there the whole time? You scared me. Do you live out here? You're crazy. How did I, you know I was here? Were you waiting for me? Awesome. You had no idea what to do. You began to laugh. I thought I was going to catch someone, but you got me. Um, were you in there this whole time? No. I heard you coming. The kid kicked their legs up and down in the leaf pile that surrounded them. 
The crunch of dried plants finished the message. I went to hide just now so I could jump out when you got here. They talked about it like it was the obvious thing to do, and your reaction was confusing to them. Oh. What could you- what would you have done if I didn't come? Alright, that was pretty good. That's so dumb. You didn't have anything else to say. What would you have done if I didn't come? That got the stranger giggling. I would have gotten out after a while and played some more. Wait here. The jumping jack kid hopped up again, but this time it was to get up off the ground. They dashed to the opposite edge of the open space, leaves scattering behind them, dropping out of their clothes and being kicked up by their steps. You were already wondering what was going to happen next. From behind one of the tall, crooked trees, the kid began throwing sticks and other plant pieces around. They were uncovering a hidden treasure, a big brown bag. They had to use both hands to lift the pouch and get it over their head. The thick strap pulled tight under the strain of the weight attached to it. The line of their mouth looked just as strained. The stranger huffed when they released the bag from their fingers, letting it rest completely across their shoulder. Got a burp again. You heard stuff bumping around inside from the, your position way over here. It was a really full pack. But it didn't slow that kid down. They ran back at full speed to meet you where you were. When they were in front of your face, they gave a wave and asked a question. Hi, are you a girl too? Sometimes. Kind of, not real. Totally. No. You shook your head. I'm not a girl. No, why would you think that? You asked curiously. Why would- why would- no, why would you think that- something like that, you ask, feeling insulted? Um... Shake head. Okay, boys and stuff are just as good. What's the right answer? I'm just a kid. People talk about me with they, them. And then it was like all the clouds in the sky and her head- and her head, you guessed, had cleared away. Alright! And all of a sudden, the leafy girl seemed to remember to introduce herself the way most people do. I'm Tamarack. Alright, that sounds nice. Really? Tamarack is a weird name. Cool. Tamarack, what's that mean? Wait, isn't that a normal word and not a name? I can't say that. My <laughs> What's that mean? A tamarack is a kind of tree. I like it a lot. So what's your name? I'm Soul. Wow, hi Soul. She greeted you with a finger spread wave of her hand, as sweetly as if you'd always known each other and she'd done it a hundred times. Do you, do you like it, your name? Yeah, no, I don't know. Sometimes a little. It's alright, I guess. You nodded in agreement, you shook your head against that, you shrugged vaguely. Yeah. Ooh, alright. Why are you here? Where did you come from? Are you visiting? She piled on one question after the other, letting them bubble out like her laughter. I'm not some kind of tourist. My mom and me moved into this town. Tamarack gasped, her large eyes opening even wider. They were full of sparkles. Me too! I'm new too! I moved to live with my Omi and Opa. They have a house here and I'm gonna be there now. Who are they? Are those your parents' names? You're living with your grandparents? I've heard that before. Oh, me and Opa's grandma and grandpa. You have no idea what you're saying. I have no idea what you're saying. You listen quietly. Ah, uh, living with your grandparents? Yep. Oh, all right. That's nice. Nifty. I have no idea what it'd be like not to live with my mom. Are your parents dead? Fucking <laughs> kid would be like... Why did you move in with them? What about your parents? You didn't say anything to that. Why did you move in the, with them? What about your parents? They're busy and not at home. I wouldn't go to school or do anything if I stayed there. So I'm gonna live with Omi and Opa not right now. Okay, that sounds sad. Your parents seem lousy. Weird. Do you feel bad about it? You weren't sure what to say. Okay. But her explanation wasn't finished just yet. And I'm busy, too. You are? Yeah. I've been here five days and it's really good. There's so much out here I probably won't be finished for a long, long time. Months, maybe. This is my very first day in Golden Grove. 
Wow, that's barely different at all. We're a match. She furrowed her extra short eyebrows as much as she could, could as a new idea came to her. Hey, I'm a girl and you're not, but we're both new. And what if we're the same age? I'm 10. I'm 10 too. You're 10, so am I. We are the same. Why do you even care? You nodded. Yes, you kept quiet. You're ten, so am I. Hooray! Same age forever! Happily, Tamarack held onto the worn strap of her big bag and bounced up and down in place. You decided that this was the perfect time to- Dinner's done, I think. <laughs> Hong Kong. Okay, I'll finish reading this and then I'm gonna go grab food real quick. You decided that this was the perfect time to talk to her about what you were doing. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab food real quick. I will be right back.
and we're back. Um, we have enchiladas. They were like the kind that you like heat up in the oven. But like, I went up at like 5.30 and I was like, oh, when's dinner gonna be done? My mom was like, I don't know, an hour or two hours. And I was like, okay, I'll just start stream before and I'll eat during stream. <laughs> So apologies if you hear me eating, it's because I am. So, choices. Hey, I got hit with a paper airplane a little while ago. Was that you? Um, did you throw a paper airplane at me? Do you maybe know anything about a paper airplane? Tell me the truth, are you the paper airplane person? Do you know what this is? You asked while pull it, pulling out the page. Let's do that. She began to cheer louder the moment she caught sight of the unusually colored page. You got it? Yes, I got it. It's right here. Woo! She flung her arms up over her head in celebration, knocking her bag out to the side. It made a thump noise when it swung back against her. My aim is good. You blinked at her in disbelief. You'd done it. You found the mystery person who made the strange paper airplane message. She was entertaining, you thought. You rubbed out your eyes exhaustedly. You couldn't believe the trouble she set off. You smiled to yourself. She was so cute, you thought. You didn't know how to feel about that. She was entertaining, you thought. Thanks for sending it. How, how did you know my name? That plane was really cool. Why would you do that? Yeah, it is. Your throat is perfect. How come you sent me a note instead of just talking to me? What was that message even supposed to mean? You smiled quietly, but with satisfaction. How did you know my name? You told me. No, before that. I didn't know it before that. What is that supposed to mean? Hmm? You thought you knew what disbelief was a second ago, but hearing that that made you feel it in ways you'd never had before. You, the stunned look on your face got Tamarack to add more. The paper I used wasn't mine. It was litter in the woods. I picked it up and put it in my bag because I couldn't leave it there on the ground. Then when I saw you standing in the road, I just had the idea. I could do something fun with that garbage by making it a paper airplane for you. So you didn't write anything on it? Yeah, I didn't. Oh. Well, that part makes sense, but this is still confusing. What's the point of sending a paper airplane if you don't have a message? Why would you use a piece of paper that had stuff written on it for that? Are you kidding? Then who did write the note? I don't know. That was all she said. Tamrak couldn't tell you anything more. The person who wrote that strange message for you was still a mes mystery. You hadn't found them even after meeting the paper airplane person. Shrugged and accepted it. You were thrilled that the mystery had deepened. You felt creeped out. You were more determined than ever to figure things out. You were so disappointed you were completely frustrated. More determined than ever. There was no way you could let this go until you'd gotten answers. You started thinking more and more about this. Making plans in your head. Tamarack could tell something was going on with you. So? What did the paper say? Was it funny? Do you think random st stuff is funny? It was short. All the parts were on different lines. The words were, hello, go out, hide out, soul heart. What? That's so weird. Who would write that? I know, that's what I was thinking. It's strange. She took a big hop closer to you, a smile growing across her face as she landed. You should keep going and I'll come too. That paper isn't very old. It would have gotten wet or eaten by bugs if it was out there in the forest for a while. We could track them down and ask them what they were doing. Me hungry. I haven't really eaten anything today. I woke up at 3 p.m. I meant to wake up at 2.30. Uh, was very tired. Okay, you can come. I was gonna ask that. Well, alright, if you really want to. Mm, yeah, I could use more eyes. Things I would have gotten scared. 
something I need to do on my own, so I'm going to have to say, yeah, you can come yet. Woohoo! Tamarack snatched up a nearly nearby stick off the ground and directed the pointy end forward the way you had come. We're gonna find the litterer who puts weird things on paper. And so you started to walk along the brown fall brush again, now with your new partner in the adventure. Tamarack came along from behind you with eager skipping steps. She was right, you were going to find that note writer person who knew your name. Soon you reached the head of the path. You were at the crossroad once more, but you'd brought back knowledge and this new girl with you. All right, we did that one. It's where, where you were, and down there is a, just a car road. You stood at Tamarack's side, gesturing around him animatedly with both hands. You didn't know if that helped her understand better, but you couldn't keep still. But there's that way over on this other side. You bent your knees, stretched out your both your arms, and pointed across the forked passage to where the second dirt imprint was. Tamarack couldn't possibly miss it with your direction. With her lips shut into a tight line, she nodded rapidly and with seriousness. But only for a second, then she was perky again. She was having fun and only pretending like she wasn't always so silly. Yeah, yeah, okay, down the tree path for you and me. The decision easily made, your, you and her crunching footsteps started up again in unison, and still your quest continued. The path ended up being kind of a trick. You ran out of dirt to walk on, only after a minute or two, and it became plain grass everywhere. Luckily, you, you only had to keep following the curved bend of brush and tree, tree tr trunks that separated the forest from not the forest you know, know you were going. What the fuck? Hold on. I'm having a stroke. That separated the forest from not the forest to know you were going where you had planned to go. Tamara hummed a happy tune, not bothered by the change in the ground at all. You made eye contact and she started to speak words instead of music. It's good what we're looking it's good that we're looking this way. Walking down the road that goes to town would have been a bad idea. Do your Omi and Opa have a rule against that too? I don't know. Oh, then how come? Her eyes went wide. Whatever news she had to give must be something awful. So you have no idea because you just got here, but I've seen it. The town here is bad. The buildings were probably new in my own up over ten. It's old and dusty. Nobody's going anywhere or doing anything. They just live in this place, sit around and do that forever. You could never have fun there. Oh, don't I know it. I lived in, um, before I lived where I'm at now, I lived in a t uh, two different tourist towns. And they were both, like, uh, one of the, the, the last one I lived in was, like, really old. And it's where my mom grew up. And just so many shops and things have obviously changed since my mom was a kid. But not enough change, you know? She spoke gravely, giving the topic a moment of silence. After that, her sparks came back, lighting up her features. But is it all okay since it's right next to here? Tamara hopped along, directing her stick to the tree line at your sides. Everything in the forest is growing or dying or changing, no matter what. You look at one spot, then look at a different spot. You look back at that, the spot and you'll see something new you didn't even notice before. She spread her arms across and up in front of your face playfully. His magic. Wow, you're right. Then as you strolled even farther, something came into view. You almost didn't notice it at first. Stretching about as high as the trees and made out of practically the same colored wood was a tower sort of thing. The bottom of it was mostly empty space with thin stick poles at the corners and only one full wall. There were little fake rocks stuck to the boards of the wall side, probably for people to climb on. Above was an actual floor with a slanty roof and railings around. Some ropes dangled off of it in multiple places. 
The thought came to you that it had the same feeling as a tree house, except not in a tree. It definitely wasn't a real house. You might have found a local playground. A squealing whisper came right into your ear. Tamarack had noticed the wood thing, too. Let's go see it. She pulled away from the side of your head to march to the tower without waiting for you to even answer. Curiously, you moved closer until you were right in front, and that's when you came to the shocking realization that there was something up in, the, in, in there at the top. Eyes squinting at to try seeing more clearly, and your neck bent back so far your head might fall off. You could make out a lumpy pile. You just stood there looking. You, ju you shouted out. You gave the base of the tower a swift kick. You gave the base of the tower a good shake with both hands. You grabbed onto the part sticking out to try climbing up there. Reaching one hand higher and the other closer to anchor yourself, you grabbed ho hold of different fake rocks attached to the wall. You then situated one of your feet against the lowest climbing point. You huffed and strained your arms to pull. pull. The foot on the rock then carried all your weight as you lifted the other into the air. It was tricky, but you got the second foot against a rock on of its own that was higher up than the first you'd made it fully off the ground oh that's cute hello hello is somebody home the sudden sound of a clattering ruckus from inside the fort made you flinch in place it was a scrambling thudding noise that you knew came from movement that lump stopped being just a lump it shot up, bent over, right over the railing, peered down, and saw you. Oh, the stream's being a little shaky. It was another kid. Hmm, if it's gonna be shaky, it might, I might just turn off the... Let's turn off VC face. See if that fixes the problem. Hopefully it should fix the problem. Didn't realize it was stuttering there. Not bad. It was another kid. Who were they? That's all you could wonder. You couldn't look away from their eyes. They were really deep brown. They had a pointy hairline, you noticed. You liked the fluffy hooded coat they had on. That was the prettiest person you'd ever seen. You liked the fluffy hooded coat they had on. Still a bit shaky, it's looking like. But it's looking a little better. Your hand started to shake as you held yourself up against the wall. You had to step back onto the grass. The person stayed put. The silent standoff of surprise played out between you and the stranger. Then, all together, one half of their mouth, one of their eyebrows, and one of their hands shifted upwards. That lopsided pose they had and the fact that they were at the top of the tower made them seem pretty in charge here. Who are you? Why are you in my backyard? Oh, they were in charge here. I'm just... Sorry if it's taken me a minute. One, I'm eating. Two, I'm making sure that everything's moving smoothly. Just a bit of lag, it's looking like. Thankfully, thankfully, it's a visual novel. So. I got um, orange vanilla Coca-Cola. I'm Soul. 
I didn't know this was your backyard. I couldn't tell. Sorry. I'm looking for something. Who are you? Hi. Your backyard? There's no fence or anything. I didn't know this was your backyard. I couldn't tell. Sorry. Somehow they twisted their smile and leaned over the railing even more than before. Yeah, there's no fence, but there's a house right over there. And if you look again, you can even see that's the back of a house. And so this is my backyard. My backyard, because I live in that house. You knew what a house was and what a backyard was. The kid was making a joke of you. How could I have known that far away house with, went with all this open grass? Fine. You just stopped talking about it. You're being mean to me. Okay, you're pretty clever. That house, it isn't even close here at all. It's way over the... Excuse me. <laughs> Straight up burps. You're a real jerk, huh? You were... F they were funny. You had to admit to yourself. That house, it's not even close. Why are we having so many problems with the lag? Um, let's see. Let's try making the window a bit smaller. Oops. Sorry, there's like black bars. There we go. So the, now it looks a little uh, low quality on stream, but it's it'll have to do. Okay. Your perfectly wise argument didn't have an impact on their stupid smile at all. Hmm. I do have a pretty big backyard. Thank you for saying so. After doing her own snooping, Tamarack skipped out from under the tower to join you in the stranger's eye line. She didn't miss a beat, waving and introducing herself to the new person. Oh, I accidentally right-clicked. Okay, yeah, that looks like it's running a lot better. Hi, I'm Tamarack. Hey. At that, they pressed the palms of their hands hard against the railing, then used it to kick their legs up over their sides and throw themselves right off the fort. Oh, this enchilada crunchy. This enchilada crunchy. Whoa. There was a powerful crunch and a gust of air when the person hit the ground just a little to the side of where you were. My feet are falling asleep from the way I was sitting on them. They landed on their feet, crouching into a ball and making the hood of their jacket flip over their head from the impact from falling so far down. The person stayed like that for long enough that the leaves they stirred up settled quietly onto the grass again. Then the kids straightened themselves out with more poise than you could have expected. Squared shoulders, chin up, and with one hand they pushed the hood down over their back again. They were confident and knew how to show it. That's that! Why would you do that? That was so cool. That seemed dangerous. That was dumb to do. Could I try jumping off there? You could have crushed me. You were left speechless. That was so cool. Yeah, it was. They took hold of the open sides of their jacket and flapped them out, shaking off bits of sticks and whatever other stuff that got on, on it when they collided with the dirt. Anyway.
They shifted their head around to get their hair back over their shoulders the way it was before. Then jabbed a finger on into their own chest. I'm Mr. Tulin. Q-I-U-N-L-I-N. It means... Both of Chu's arms spread out openly, gesturing to the wide world around, all around. Autumn, nice to meet ya. What are your whole names? Through chuckles, Tamrak put on a fake voice that was deeper than her normal one and probably meant to sound mature. I'm a Miss Tamrak a Bowman. A Tamrak is a tree. That introduction got a thumbs up from Chu. Cool, Miss Tamarack Bauman. Um, my name's Soul. I'm Mix Soul Heart. Why did you say it so fancy? You didn't say anything, but shouldn't the U come after the Q? You're not a Mister. You're a kid. Why did you sound it, say it weird like that? My parents taught me. Mom says it's polite. Dad says it's useful. They're both right. Some people might get it by themselves, and some people might ask about it, but a lot of people won't. Now nobody has to. Okay, that makes sense. Good. But hey, that's still about my name. What's your whole name, I want to know? I'm Mix Soulheart. Want enchilada. Hold on. Crunchy. Mix. He said the same thing that you just did, but while it made sense to you, Chu was confused. It was like you had been talking backwards to him. How did your doctor figure that out? Did they have extra degrees? Figured it out myself? I'm not sure. You shouldn't ask that. My doctor didn't know. I had to say what it was myself when I could. It's just a bunch of weird stuff people make up. Figured it out myself. Really? You did that? You thought that what the doctors and adults said wasn't right and told everybody? Whoops. I scrolled up. Yeah, I did. After first gasping, a grin spread out across his whole face. You've got stuff figured out and you're just a kid like I am. That's right, I am smart. I don't know if I could got everything figured out forever. You looked away, not knowing what to say. Maybe it'll be different later. Thanks, it's not that big a deal. That's right, I'm smart. I'm impressed by your wisdom, Mix Heart. Wait, and also, how old are you two? We seem pretty similar to me. Me and them are the same ten. Chu slapped his fingerless gloved hand against the front of his chest to show just how taken back he was. Whoa, so am I. Nobody else close by was exactly ten before, and now there's two more. Wow, we came at just the right time. You did. And you two are gonna grow up someday, and I'm gonna grow up too, but that's never gonna stop us from being the same age. Cool. Yeah, this is great. Okay. Even if we are the same age, I still act older than you do. Even if we're the same age, you still act older than I do. You stood there quietly, you shrugged over it, you gave a big thumbs up. More ten-year-olds were better than less. But... Crunchy. The talk you were having ended with a clear clap from Chu to bring it to a close. Now that we're people who know each other, I still want to hear what we, you were doing. I've lived my whole life in this town and this neighborhood. In that house, and I've never seen either of you anywhere. There's got to be something going on. Tamarack's wide, knowing gaze met yours. You understood what you had to do. 
Well, you reached right into your pocket and presented the mystery paper to Chu, wanting your own explanation. But before you even said anything about it, Chu wheezed with a tight grimace. He looked as stiff as that, the wood tower behind him, just like that. You're a... You're a... 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 He stammered and babbled and pointed his finger all around the space that was sort of in front of you until the word finally came out of him. A sorcerer? What? No, wait. Chu, Chu threw his hands up higher towards the sh his shoulders, the sudden movement making sure nothing interrupted his train of thought. You're a thief. That's why you're here to rob my house. That's right, I'm going to steal all your stuff. No, you were no, you were right. I'm a I'm b magic. I'm a sorcerer and a thief. I'm not a sorcerer or a thief. That makes no sense. Why do you sound so excited about that? You think I'm going to rob you? Why would I let you know if I was here if I was going to steal? I'm a I'm a sorcerer and a thief. Oh, what? Do you really think I'm a sorcerer or robber? He got all fluttery with his laugh and the waving of his fingers. No, you're just a kid, but you've got some good tricks. Chu tucked one of his hands inside his jacket. He moved it around in there, humming, humming the whole time. There was some kind of secret pocket or compartment in that coat. Aha! Just as you had thought, when he removed his hand, he was grabbing onto something. It was a little notebook. The edges were bent and crumply. Crumly, probably from being squished a lot of ways and a lot of times. And there were papers sticking out in weird ways that made you think they weren't even attached to the book anymore. They were just smashed to get between other pages to keep them in place. But the thing you noticed the most were the colors, tan with dark brown lines. Tamrak squealed, bounding closer to you. She, she and you had the same idea at the same time. It was the paper from that airplane. She lift, flipped open the book, tapped in a slow, considering rhythm at the front page with the back of his knuckles, and said what you wanted to know without you having to do anything. That's my special paper with my notes on it, but it's not in my notebook. It was in your pocket. You must have done the the thing that's sight of hand, sight, sight of hand. That's what you did to snatch my stuff in the blink of an eye while I was standing right here. So you're a magician or a pickpocket. That's all it could be. He shifted on his feet, putting one hand to his hip and using the other to make a waggling gesture with the notebook. She was really confident in his accusation against you. Can you show me how you do it? Uh, but that wavy motion she did was too much for the old notebook. It bent in half upwards and downwards with the momentum of its owner's arm. Some of the papers slid out. They drifted to the ground lightly, the same way leaves fall from trees. You're, you stared right at them, sitting on the ground, freely like that. She didn't. You lost it. <laughs> Got a burp. Excuse me. You're right, I don't know how the paper ended in the woods. You, you were being sarcastic. Maybe you just lost a paper and that's how Tamarack found it? Yep, you dropped it. Nah, I never lose things. <clears throat> he said it absentmindedly, still not paying attention to the papers cluttered around his feet. They were pretty much just waiting to blow away in the wind at that point. There are papers on the ground right now, you know. Um, I think you might want to look down. You never lose things, you've already lost more papers. 
Ah. Uh... <laughs> you hope you never notice what happened. It'd be funny. She was fun with your reaction. Came out as a set of snickers. His cheeky mood drifted away once those were done. Tamarack twirled one corner of her scarf between her hands. She wanted to act like it was normal with nothing happening, even though she was grinning like something was definitely happening. But she obviously wasn't going to tell Chu either. <coughs> Chu twisted to the side to better rummage inside the hidden pocket of his jacket. He made sure that the notebook made it back to its normal spot. When he tilted his face back towards you, he was quiet and thoughtful. This is very mysterious. My paper vanished and two new kids appeared in my backyard all out of nowhere. I don't get it. Two, I'm your neighbor now. I moved into the middle of the middle house on the street. Oh, the new neighbors. That's right. That's you. It makes so much sense. Except for her. His growing excitement scrunched into confusion. Chu brought a hand to his chin while also pointing squarely at Tamarack with the other one. I'm pretty positive there was only going to be one new kid moving in. Unless your soul's mom? Tamarack was completely tickled by the idea, giggling and covering her mouth, mouth with her hands. She didn't do a good job stopping any of the laughter from getting out. No, I'm not a mom. I moved in with my Omi and Opa. Omi and Opa? I've never heard of that. Is that, is that another language? Uh-huh. It's German in there. German. Cool. Thanks, but they already had a house here. It's the gray one. Whoa, there's a granny who lives there and a guy that's her husband. <laughs> that's your Omi and Opa? I think so, probably. Omi has really long hair. Opa has short hair and some of it is on his face. Omi and Opa means granny and grandpa. Yeah. Chu bobbed his head up and down with great understanding. Granny and him have a kid now, huh? Wow. He leaned his weight from one foot over to the other. The sight of his red sneaker bumped against some of the papers. It made him freeze. Then Chu's eyes widened. He lifted the notebook over his head and twisted his feet outward more to fully clear, clear his view of the grass below. Finally, he spotted the missing pages. He stopped talking and dropped to his knees to scoop up the loose papers. It only took a second for each one to be gathered. He leaned off his knees onto his butt and made a little oof sound. From there, he got his feet against the ground while pushing up with his hands, still clutching the paper so he could stand again. With that, successfully re with that successful rescue mission done, Chu delicately flipped through the notebook, inserting the loose papers along the way between different pages. He went all the way to the end. Then Chu's complete book was pressed shut once more. After that, Chu twisted to the side to better rummage inside the hidden pocket of his jacket. He made super sure that the entire stack of papers made it back safely this time. He heard a sigh of relief. In an even, in an even swooping move, Chu tilted his head back over his shoulder to reveal his face again. The shocked expression from before was completely gone. He had that smirk again. So, did you see that? I don't lose anything. Darn, it had been so close. You had thought that, but you must have accidentally made a face or something too since Chu had to talk about it. Did you think I wasn't going to see it? Wait. Smiling, Chu leaned a lot forward, all the w way onto his tippy toes. He stayed up and put his hands against his chest like it was nothing. He didn't know how he stood on them so well. Did you hope I wasn't going to see it? Or maybe he'd read your mind. You shrugged, not really feeling sorry about it. <coughs> he gave one triumphantly loud laugh, letting the, the rest of his feet lie firmly against the ground again. Sorry for you, I only disappoint when someone wants it to be bad. He got you with double finger guns. Put that down in your own notebook. Well, that's great for you. You're a real idiot, you said frustratedly. You're an idiot, you said jokingly. Your cheeks got hot from embarrassment. I, I right-clicked again. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You broke into laughter. Wow, Chu was so cool, you thought. Dang, Chu was cool. You annoyingly had to admit it to yourself. Hmm. You're an idiot, you said jokingly. Maybe, but I mean what I say. Then Chu took, shook his head side to side, flopping dark brown strands of hair around and trying to sort out his thoughts. But if you're just new neighbors, not thieves or sorcerers, how do you know that was my paper? I didn't know, not for sure. 
What? You were showing my notes off to everyone you saw in the world? Yeah, that was kind of the idea. Huh? You knew it would be a long story, so you just took it, so you took in a huge breath. Tamarack put her fists up eagerly in her own preparation to talk about what she had done. I got here today with my mom. She's waiting for the, the real real estate agent, so I had to go spend time doing something. I went down to the road, and a paper airplane hit me in the shoulder. And nobody was there. That was me. I threw it and ran away. It was great. Mm-hmm. I picked it up and opened the plane and saw the stuff written on it. I thought the person throwing the plane was trying to give me a message. But that wasn't me who wrote it. Right. Then Sol went into the forest after and I surprised them by jumping out of the leaves. Chu nodded along, probably not getting everything you two were talking about, but curious enough to just keep listening. And then I talked to her about the paper airplane I found and she told me what we said that she made the plane but didn't write what was on it. I asked where she got it. Tam Tamrak chimed in against, again as your story continued to bounce back and forth between the two of you. I found it on the ground in the woods. It had uh, it already had the note, but I didn't think that was important at first. Soul made me wonder about it. We went to discover the word writer. And it was you. Huh? Chu put his hands on his hips as he thought hard about the info he had learned from you. You're saying all this random stuff for fun? I guess so, but if you were the one who wrote that, how did you know my name? That was on the note, and what were those other words supposed to mean? Hello, go out, hide out, uh, soul heart? It doesn't make sense. Oh! Chu cracked a smile and flicked out his arms to start his own explanation. That's just the stuff I was gonna do. Counting one, two, three on his fingers, Chu listed off each part of the letter simply. Hello, say hi to the people around. Go out, visit the town or another neighborhood or whatever. Hideout means to go to my hideout. Chu stopped the countdown to pat the sturdy wooden wall behind him with a pride. With the pride, with pride. Right here. Hmm, fine. I get it now. Wow, I like your hideout. That was all stupid. You, uh, you said sharply. That's so stupid, you said amused. Your hideout is your own backyard. If that's a hideout, why would you tell me it's a hideout? You seem alright. You can know about it, but don't tell anyone else. Ah, right. Yeah, for your name being there, my mom and dad told me. They talked about how people were moving in next door and there was going to be a kid my age and that their name was Soulheart. It was cool to me, so I wrote it down. That way I wouldn't forget. And I even took out and read that page a lot to make sure it'd be something I remembered. Looks like I forgot after all. That's it? Okay then. Thanks for trying to remember anyway. I don't know why you're confident when you get everything wrong, you said put off. You're such a scatterbrain, you said put off. Wow, you're such a scatterbrain, you said fondly. I can't believe you forgot who I was after your parents told you everything. Thanks for trying to remember. You're welcome. I'll remember this time, definitely. But that's pretty crazy that with the air paper airplane, it's really impressive of you to put the whole thing together. He was right. You and Tamarack had now been able to discover the whole story. It felt good. You were proud of yourself. You didn't care that much. It went better than you thought. But this means you did lose that page out there somewhere. Uh-huh, so what was that about never losing things? This means you did lose your page. Tamarack found your paper on the ground. With wrinkled brows, Chu lifted his hands up to the side of his head so he could instead tug at the front strands of his hair, pulling them out fully straight. Oh, I don't know how it's possible. Are you too sure you're not with sorcerers or thieves at all? Yes. Too bad. He was so funny. You covered your eyes at the ridiculousness. You sighed. You smirked widely. He was so adorable. You felt tired. You just ignored it. He was so funny. Chu finished his pout, straightening up and putting his hands solidly on his hips. He was back to being in control. You know, there's nobody out there who's perfect. I accept my mistake and I'm sorry to you, Forrest, for messing up the place. I think it forgives you. Cool. That's really nice of you to say, Chu. Thanks. But you realize suddenly how late uh, it must have gotten. Your mom would start to worry soon. That wasn't good. Your turning thoughts were put on pause when Chu suddenly changed the subject. Hey, Soul, Tamrak, I'll walk you around back to the front. I want to hang out more. Mm, I should probably see how Omi and Opa are. They're pretty old and need help sometimes. Yeah, we could all go back together. All right, we can? Yes, I was going to ask that. 
Well, okay, if you both are sure. Sorry, I want to be by myself. No, I don't want people coming. Sorry, me and Tamarack are going together. No, you should stay here, me and Tamarack. Get you, bye Tamarack. Two of us are going. All right. You relaxed your stance, accepting that this was really over now. Yay! Her tear had extra pizzazz because she still had that stick to the point up high. To our houses. While chuckling, she used his fish... Fish? His fish? His fist to enthusiastically punch the air. It matched Tamarack's pose. Homeward bound. This is really nice. We're going back as successful people. All right, you two are loud. He smiled at them in agreement. He watched the two in shy silence. We're going back as successful people. Pizza? People, what's happening to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had her cup, had cupped her hands around her mouth to make it extra loud. We are victorious. And so you started to walk through the yellowed fall grass to get to the neighborhood again, but you weren't going to be alone there. Tamarack bounded ahead, bouncing her arm up and down with a stick like she was the conductor of a marching band, while Chu came alongside you with even casual steps. You were returning to that house. Your new neighborhood had become even more orange-toned by the time you finally returned to it. The far-off sun slowly sunk away behind the tallest mountains and forests to sleep for the night. Your shadows grew larger, pu pulling away from your bodies to reach out into the street ahead. The dark shapes morphed and combined with one another as you ma walked in your own mismatched rhythm. All while the eyeball chillingness of the o outside world got more powerful bit by bit. Tamrak still stayed about two steps ahead. Sometimes she was closer and sometimes she got away from you again. She used her stick to knock at the bushes and lamps along the sidewalk. She was next to you but had switched things up so that he was taking large skips backwards. You guessed it was to look at you in the face better, or he just thought it was fun. He pointed out the shar sharpest building on the street as he went. Part of it kind of looked like a tower, a different kind than the one in the backyard. See, that's the house from the front. It's great. And that's your house, right? The one in the mill. And Granny owns even further away one. Mm-hmm. Cool. The sounds of your steps continued to echo through the cul-de-sac until you came to a stop right in the center of the path. You'd arrived. Tamarack put both her hands up in front of her chest and waved them around. I'm going home. Tamarack spun in place before dashing further along the sidewalk to the sloped gray house on the other end of the neighborhood. Her bag cl clunked and jingled at her side the whole way there. Bye. Okay, this is it. Chu pulled out an eager grin. We've got to meet up again later. See you. Chu flipped around to go back to the same way he had come with you. He needed to return to the pointy red house with a huge backyard. He didn't drop any papers this time. You waited there in front of the house in the dimming evening light, watching the other two kids go to their homes right on the same street. Bye, see you later. Be careful on your way back. Thank you for coming with me. It was cool to meet you too. You wave a goodbye. You waved your hands in the air and jumped up. That was everything. The whole outing was done. In the quiet resolution of your first day in this place, the two encounters you had earlier that afternoon drifted through your head. Tamarack and Chu. You're at the stage where you'll get to set your dynamic with Tamarack and Chu. There's a tutorial for that whole feature, but because this mini-demo is nearing the end and doesn't utilize dynamics, we're including the option to skip past all the extra info for now. Would you like to hear about dynamics for future reference, or go directly to the dynamics screen to quickly continue past it? Yeah, let's know how the dynamic system works. Our life now and forever has a special way of constructing the personalized relationship you have with the two neighbors you grow up with. It's called dynamics. This encompasses how your character and that character feel about one another and how they generally interact with each other. It doesn't determine if your character is shy or confident or sociable or unsociable. That's done through the fa phrasing action slash actions you pick in normal choices. This is only setting how you and the two leads tend to think slash approach things on a top line level. These settings can be the same for both Tamarack and Chu or be completely different for one another. The first part of the dynamic system is what you set for your relationship standing. Your chosen relationship standing is always mutual with the other character. It's possible to change your standing at the start of each step and even at certain points within a step, at least, normally. There are some settings that can't be changed once you pick them. The five main options for your relationship standing are neighbors, friends, 
family, crushes, and beloved. Neighbors means there's someone you know and it's nothing more meaningful than that. Whether it's still amicable or completely cold or even hostile is up to you. <coughs> friends means that you're friends. While on the standing it's possible to go even deeper and have them be your best friend, but that's not set on the dynamic screen. Family means that you truly love them and will always keep them in your life in a fully platonic way. You can't choose to love someone this deeply until later steps once you've known them longer. You also won't be able to change the setting to anything else once you've picked it. It's completely certain and unwavering. You can bring both Tamrak and Chu into your proverbial family. Crushes means that you and them have crushes on each other. While on the standing, you can keep your feeling a secret and act as though you're only friends slash best friends, or it can be known that you're romantically interested. Later in the game, you can also officially go steady with Tamrak or Chu. If you begin dating one of them, your standing on the dynamic screen will change to partners instead of crushes. It's possible to be crushing on Tamarack and Chu at the same time, but you can only get into an actual romantic relationship with one. If you had been crushing on both and get into a relationship, you'll automatically go to being friends with the other character you're not dating. You won't be able to keep expressing romantic interest in them. And if you do date one, you can't break up with them. The partner status can't go away once you get it. It is possible to change simply crushes to one of the other options if you want to. Beloved means you truly love them and will always keep them in your life in a clearly romantic way. You can't choose to love someone this deeply until later steps until you've known them longer. You also won't be able to change this setting to anything else once you've picked it. It's completely certain and unwavering. Like crushes, the romantic feelings can be known, a secret, or you can be official partners. If you're at this setting, you'll also unlock the possibility of getting engaged and changing your relationship status to fiancés. There's no requirement to commit or get m married or even date, however. What you do with your feelings of love is up to you. You can only choose beloveds for one of them. Tamarack and Chu ha each have their own romantic scenes that aren't set together. At least that's the current situation. If time slash budget allows, we might be able to add a new set of alterations for being in love with slash dating both of them. It's not a guarantee that we can do it, but it's something that we have in mind. That's part of one of dynamics. The second part is the expression elements. This is how you and the other character generally interact with the other. Like relationship standing, expression elements are determined separately for Tamarack and for Chu. It doesn't have to be the same for both. But expression elements don't have to be mutual between your character and Tamarack slash Chu. They, they have their own ways of conveying themselves and your character gets to have theirs. Expression elements are broken down further into three meters with three choices per meter. Meter 1, deferring, teamworking, contesting. Meter 2, praising, unassuming, teasing. Meter 3, doting, accepting, idolizing. For meter 1, you can use it to determine if your character is a follower or goes with the flow of using deterring, deferring. A, co collaborator or comprise use, a collaborator or compriser using teamworking or tries to be the leader or decision maker whether the other person actually wants to follow them or not using contesting. For meter 2, it determines if your MC is the type of person to go out of their way to make comments on the other person and what they do. If not, they're unassuming. If so, the comments can be complimentary or even flirting if praising, or they can be joking or giving the other person a hard time if teasing. Meter 3 can be set to determine how your character views Tamarack and Chu. Do they feel like they need to look out for them, or that they're on the same level as each other, or the, that the other person is more incredible than most? When you first meet Chu and Tamarack in the story, they go with their normal kind of behavior for their interactions with your character. Because of that, expression elements are always the same in Step 1. Step 1, Chu, teamworking, teasing, and doting. Tamarack, contesting, praising, accepting. As you spend more time with Tamarack and Chu, they'll get to know your character better, and each, step of, the, each of the next steps, their expression elements can change to match that. If, for example, you're friends with Tamarack and express displeasure whenever she insists on getting her way, she'll notice that. In step two, instead of contesting, she'll be teamworking with your character, or even deferring, depending on the details. Their connection with your character will develop organically. Though in future steps, you'll also have the option of customizing their expression elements if you want to make sure your playthrough has a specific feel. And starting in step two, and if you're more than just neighbors, a fourth expression element meter unlocks. Meter four, jealous of, not jealous, jealous over. Jealous of means that one character is envious of the life, appearances, abilities, relationships, or something else of the other person, depending on the specifics involved. 
jealous over means that they feel discomfort if they th think the other person seems to like someone else more or isn't spending as much time with them as normal and such. The jealousy meter does nothing but let you add more negative feelings or rela relationships competition interactions as an extra element of drama to your life. By default, Chu, Tamarack, and you will always be not jealous, which skips all of that. You'll have to choose to customize the expression elements and set them to be to being jealous in one way or the other for that kind of emotion to crop up. With relationship standing and expression elements, you'll be able to have a truly personal dynamic with Tam Tamarack and with you. There are dozens of combos for the step you're in when going from step to step. Being at crushes in step 3 will be different if you used to be friends than if you were crushing from the start, and so on. You have plenty of options to try out. That ends the Dynamics System tutorial. We hope you'll enjoy the connection you create with Tamarack and Chu. Oh. Okay. So. I'm pretty, pretty team working. Praising. Accepting. And then... Let's see friends for now, huh? Team working. I like the teasing of each other. And accepting. And we're also friends. Things were so different for you from just that morning when you left and went to on the drive to move. Before then, you'd never been in Golden Grove. You'd seen it only in pictures and hadn't known anybody who was a local there. But here you were, a person who lived in the town and was friends with your neighbors on both sides of your house who also lived there. Were you friends? You thought so. So, is that you? Your mom called from over the fence. Coming. You bounded forward and passed through the gate. Mom had left the porch and was there to meet you. Thank you for coming back. I'm sure you were having an exciting time out there. It was great. It would have been worse. I don't know. You're never going to believe what happened. Everything was amazing. You didn't say anything about it. I wish I didn't go. I met people, Mom. Kids my age. Never going to believe what happened. I bet, but I look forward to hearing about it. From strength to strength, we've got the key to the house. The agent finally arrived about 20 minutes ago. They're gone now, but I haven't peeked yet. The both of us should be here for this. It's your house, too. Yeah, this is our house now. Absolutely. Come on. Mom turned to go and slipped the key out of her sweater pocket. She gestured with the other hand for you to follow. Your mom led the way as you went back up the stairs. The key fit perfectly into the hole on the d door, and Mom smiled at the sound of an un unlocking click. Carefully, she leaned forward with, with her shoulder, giving it a nudge, unsure if the best option for the ancient door was extra force or extra restraint. The house opened with a creak. Air came out through the front like it was, ex it was exhaling. Mom let out a breath at the same time. Over here, Sol, there's space for you to get a little closer. You can see inside here. You scooched towards your mom's side in the doorframe. It was then you noticed there was a mat at the front. It had a light color and a kind of hard but fluffy texture. The sort of mat that'd get dirty looking right away when it was used, but it was still clean and nice. It hadn't been worn down at all like the rest of the building. This part of the house wasn't just an old thing left behind by other people who didn't need it or want it anymore. Someone must have put it there for this happening, for your mom and you moving in. Right in across the top, it said. Welcome home. Oh, this is cute. That's cute. Still can't put my finger on why this art looks so familiar. But we finished. Oh, I gotta stretch. That was the sound of me stretching. So that's all I had planned today. Let's uh, set up a raid. It looks like Stacy was is doing this too. Let's see. 
I think I'll have I'll send everyone over to Stacy's stream since she's also playing the game. Hold on, I'm trying to open up Twitch on my laptop. If things get a little choppy, don't worry about it. Nothing's happening. So, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, please check out the game. The demo is free, and as it said at the beginning, it's going to be a free-to-play game once it actually finishes. Um, I don't remember what their Twitter was. Uh, but I did retweet that the demo was coming out, so if you go to my Twitter... Follow me there. You can see the, 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 the tweet from the developers. And yeah. Thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope you enjoy the game when it comes out. I'm going to send you over to Boba Lottle. And you get to see more of the game. Maybe she's picking different choices than me. Who knows? Bye-bye. <laughs>